estoy muy emocionado. Chester, give me something. Come on. Got it, yeah. Vamos a Guadalajara a entrevistar a mi banda favorita en la historia. Vamos a Guadalajara a entrevistar a Bad Bad Not Good. No puedo ver la maldita emoción. Yep, I'm shaking. Vean lo talentosos son estos músicos, por favor. Mi panza me tiene confianza Trae a la esposa del chef que quiero besarla Tenedor, cuchillo, cuchara Listo amigo, esto es yeah. Bienvenidos a esta emisión de Ñam Ñam Extravaganza Donde todo se trata de tragar y platicar Nos encontramos en Guadalajara por un motivo en especial Venimos a ver a mi banda favorita del mundo Se llaman Bad Bad Not Good Probablemente ustedes no los conozcan Ni les guste el jazz Pero les voy a decir una cosa Se van a enamorar del jazz Como yo me enamoré del jazz Gracias a Bad Bad Not Good Ellos son productores de hip hop Son músicos desde hace bastantes años Han trabajado con Tyler The Creator Con Kendrick Lamar Con el Wu-Tang Clan Con el mismísimo Frank Dukes Y han colaborado con Virgil Abloh de cerca ¿Cómo decírselo? Soy muy, muy, muy fan de este grupo. Estoy muy emocionado. Acompáñame a conocer a Bad Bad Not Good uh, en esta bella entrevista. O sea, ya los conozco porque los estoqué un buen, ¿no? Pero entrevistarlos, por fin es un sueño. Desde que empecé ya, ya me estaba buscando que sucediera este momento y está por suceder. Perdón si tiemblo mucho. Shots con un mexicano. Chupito, cheque, caballito o mejor conocido como shot, 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 shot. Es una peculiar medida de alcohol comúnmente utilizada para agarrar valor antes de hacer estupideces. Tequila, whisky, vodka, jelly o de sorpresa. Un shot siempre va acompañado de apoyo moral de tus compañeros de peda y seguidito de una decisión de ética cuestionable. No sabemos quién fue el primero en tomar el shot ni por qué lo hizo, pero estamos seguros de que la pasó bomba. Si eres un turista en México, prepárate para que algún mexicano te quiera sacar con unos shots y enseñar a decir groserías en un bar. Ah, y recuerda, los shots en México son de tequila. Como los que en este episodio vemos a Richie invitarle a su panda favorita. Saludos, mamá. Este es uno de los mejores días de mi vida. ¿Cómo están, guys? Hello. Alex Owinsky. Uh, <laughs> Chester Hansen. Dylan Weed. ¿Es eso el mouse? Yeah. Yeah. Weed? Yeah. 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 Got it. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. ¿Cómo estás? Oh, estoy muy emocionado. Mira, yo estoy... Sí, estoy Eso es suficiente. No estoy No shaking. Estás totalmente bien. Estás totalmente bien. Hola. Hola. ¿Cómo están? ¿Hablan español? Ellos no. Yo sí. Buenas tardes. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola. ¿Estás de Canadá? Sí, Oh, we live in Chicago for 40 years. Oh, no way. No yes. way. Oh, cool. Chicago and Canada, like huge cities. Right? Actually, funny enough, <laughs> Toronto and Chicago are uh, like sister cities, architecture. Oh, they're, oh, they're sister The way they're kind of designed, yeah. like when you look at them, they say they're sister cities, so. ¿De qué tienes agua? Tengo arroz, jamaica y limón con chía. Jamaica. Para okay. Gracias. ¿Cuál es la Jamaica? Sí, lo haré. Jamaica, pues todos. Todos Jamaica. Yes. El club de la Jamaica con Bad Bad Not Good. Salud. Esta es la segunda vez que you come a México, ¿verdad? Right? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. La primera vez fue uh, uh, las estacas. Yes. You were very young back then. Like, <laughs> why of all the rhythms you were getting? Because I, I've seen you talk before in interviews about your influences. And honestly, I, <laughs> mm. how did you jump from that that thing of making like Brazilian rhythms and stuff to, all right, let, let's play some Tyler, the Creator covers in jazz and see what happens. I think the idea was just to try to play some music that was kind of fun and exciting at the time. So like Tyler the Creator just kind of started to put music out and he wasn't the artist that he is now in terms of scale and kind of worldwide notoriety. So um, we just wanted to try to play some music and we kind of did it as a little school project. Did you get like a, how was it like, you, you got a call from Tyler the Creator at some point and I'm like, um, oh yeah, hi guys, I want to do some songs with you. 
The thing is, I'll just do Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, it's Twitter, like, yeah. oh man, this is so freaking awesome, man. Yeah, I, yeah. With some matching pink panties and some lipstick from my granny, Supreme is on my hat like that motherfucker friendly. What happened afterwards? I don't know, I guess we kind of started to make more jams and learn more songs and kind of like, Jam like food. do more, yeah, do more like little recordings and things. I guess there was just a lot of excitement and we were just happy to be, you know, in music school you're trying and learning, doing so many things. You don't have a lot of chances to like really try and push something out there and like, you know, see if you can get a response I suppose because you're just kind of learning and studying. So we kind of started to do that and realized that that was feeling really good and fun so we just wanted to shift more towards that. Um, and try to pursue something together because we all felt confident enough to play. So that was kind of the intention, I suppose. How do you feel when you work with the Wu Tang Clan? Like, <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was very interesting. Bone crushing, smooth kicks. Wait, yeah, you have better than we do, yeah. probably. Wait, is that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how how does that happen? Um, that was just through our friend Frank Dukes. Well, he came to our first show, and he's, we've got a bunch of mutual friends, worked together, and he ended up working ended up working with Ghostface and then asked us to write some music for it, basically, yeah. I'm Iron Man, a stone-faced killer with a mask. Don't want the truth to don't ask, you couldn't handle a task. How, how do you meet Frank Duke? Just through our band manager. Yeah. Really? And, and how, how did he get involved at a point that he went like, all right, I'm not do an album with you guys. We were just kind of jamming in Alex's basement with him and like working on some stuff and then, I don't know, we just got along well so he seemed to like working with us. And he, uh, he had like a kind of aspiration to work with more musicians because he made a lot of beats and did a lot of like made beats out of samples and so after getting songs on people's albums and not making any money because of the, there's a sample and the, the money goes to the sample, he kind of had the idea to like try to compose everything. So that way the, the music was written from like an original standpoint to not be sampled or to not have any kind of clearance issues. So then I think he wanted to like work with us because we played. So you were at a basement in Toronto making the beats? That, that was actually, we did that in New York. And just sending them like, let's see what happens and that's it? Well, Frank Dix is doing that, yeah. <laughs> You did an album with the Ghostface Killer named Sour Soul, which is one of the. Oh my God! I I, I hope people don't doesn't criticize me for this, but I think it's the best Ghostface Killer album. We live, we die, we put him in the sky. Free your mind as a slave, like the Fourth of July. Uh, how, how did it feel to work with the Almighty Tony Starks? Uh, honored. It was like a long process. We were kind of saying that it was largely like composed, and then through email he would give us verses, and the songs would kind of get completed loosely over like a couple of years. And we didn't really start to meet him um, when we, until we started touring and playing shows with Ghostface. But very honored to have made that, that album and that music. And obviously, a huge shout out to our friend Frank Dukes, who kind of curated and helped produce it. Shout out to Frank Dukes yeah. every day of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Leland, uh, was, it, was it made on tapes, that the, the Sour Soul album? It's all made on tapes, right? I actually wasn't really involved with Sour Soul until the end of it. Like, these guys wrote all the music and then. I just came in in like the last kind of six months or whatever to work on like overdubbing horns and strings and stuff. So I think it was all recorded in tape though, but I don't, I don't really know the process because I wasn't there. Yeah, you were like featuring guy and suddenly yeah. everybody listened to... I, I joined the band like after Sour Soul came After out. Confessions, everybody went like, Leland has to be in that band. <laughs> <laughs> Confessions, is, it's a great song. <laughs> The Lavender video, what's, what's going on with it? It's great. Who, did you direct it? Whose idea was it? There's a friend of ours who at the time recently just had started taking like kind of instructional classes for Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> through like Craigslist. Yeah, he just thought it might be kind of funny to make a video like loosely based on like playing Dungeons and Dragons, but it becomes this like really dark. That's a crazy uh, concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Picadillo, 
You want a picadillo, a taco picadillo? I'm okay. I'm right there for the soup. You haven't won a Grammy, like, to go to pick it up, but <laughs> you worked with Kendrick Lamar for Lost. Way too hot to simmer down, might as well overheat. Mm -hmm. And Dan won an album, so you basically are part of a Grammy. Yeah, yeah I mean... Technically, yeah. yeah. We, have a, we have a piece of paper with the, like, honorary Grammy on it or whatever, which is really, like, really cool to be a part of that. Which experience is cooler, to, 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 to be part of a Grammy or to be part of a Kendrick Lamar album? The album. Yeah, the yeah, album, 100%. Yeah. Because the process for that was um, his like creative manager reached out to us and wanted to hear some like music we'd been working on. They reached out to us, which was like really nice because... So you were, you were hanging out for your... I think we were mixing our album. I think we were mixing for a revolution. Yeah. Um, you got a call like from Kendrick? Kendrick's all office? through like internet, like email and Twitter and stuff like that. Um, and then I just sent a bunch of music, and I really liked it, like little samples. Um, through Frank Dukes, we kind of learned about just like you know, if you if the inspiration to like not make a full song is like you can always just like make little bits of pieces of things and just kind of have fun recording them and trying experimenting like with the recording process. So we had recorded a lot of little bits and parts and. Um, sent, sent some stuff and then they really liked it and the sample that's on Lust was one of the things we recorded. Did you uh, guys meet this time with Kendrick or it was again well, we met long him, distance? We met him um, at Coachella. It was like super nice, like very like yeah. It was like definitely super starstruck and like idol struck, I suppose. And yeah, they um, and they took the song and worked on it like for a year to make it to what it was, kind of like. And now that he's working on a new album, <coughs> ha, ha, have you ever received some calls from him or? <laughs> yeah, it's actually executive produced by us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hear it here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really say, I suppose, because I don't actually know at this stage. Uh, can we Probably spend a good color? <laughs> Probably yeah. not, but yeah. a collaboration with some rappers we could... I guess there's like a few, but it's kind of hard to say, like, because I don't want to be like, oh, we're working with this person, the song never comes out. <laughs> um, so I was, we're working with lots of different people. Yeah, there will be stuff, hopefully, that gets released. We just shall see. You did the, the Virgil Abloh Louis Vuitton show. You were the live band during the walk. Walkway? Yeah, like the fashion runway, yeah. Were you nervous to be like playing in front of Kanye West? Yeah, for sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably the most like uh, intense thing that we've done in a few years. Yeah, because you started Cause playing like different, flashing lights covers and stuff. And suddenly you're playing for the guy who yeah. makes that music and the guy ob obviously knows you now. How Kanye West knows about you because he, <laughs> he had you in front of him. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but um, definitely very nerve-wracking. He, like, was also, he ran, ran by us and was like, that was tight. And yeah. Then, like, kept walking. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah, because yeah, if a friend ever, ever go to you like, man, I went yesterday to Kanye West concert. It's great to see him live. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Has Kanye West seen you live? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what you're... That's True, yeah. I don't know, I honestly think like something like that, it's, it's, all these experiences you're talking about with like Kendrick Lamar and Ghostface and stuff, I think we're just really grateful and happy to have had all these like experiences and um, opportunities to play and uh, people who enjoy the music and want to hear it live or give us different opportunities to do so. So kind of all just this big um, warm feeling in the heart of just like, how we're very, very lucky. Would never brag about like, oh, we did that or have done this because that's not what it's about. It's just, uh, it's about uh, the experience and the memory and like how I get to do amazing things with my friends. So yeah, like, so I know that's another like incredibly like, it's about the music. It's yeah, it's about like, the music. You know, it's another like cool little chapter, a little moment that happened in our lives, and just very grateful. How does it feel to be like part of this huge band that can 
tour around the world. You Almost, played yeah. live in Almost, yeah. which one? Which one? Oh, Antarctica. Oh, but come on, Antarctica. Who's on Antarctica? Like Metallica and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we so ask. how do you do? Don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> you, you, you've been playing in Asia. You've been playing in Australia, and South America. How does it feel to be like part of this magical moment where you can have a whole audience like crazy for you, and then have the opportunity to just walk on the streets, like being international famous, but you can walk on the streets. I don't know. Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I think the best part about playing festivals is being able to see other bands. Like, obviously, playing our own shows is super fun, but festivals are often the place where bands that never play reunite or do a couple of shows at. Like, we've gotten to see some really amazing stuff. Just seeing stuff like that is really, really so fun. Cool thing. <laughs> You're saying that the cool thing is to watch other bands live. That's yeah, basically. yeah. I mean, it's one of the cool things. <laughs> it's a really cool part of it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> There's the a challenge now. Out. You have obviously um, the album four, yes. which we were talking about. A special uh, edition. It's <laughs> Yeah. This uh, album has an amazing song called Also Four. You introduce it, at, uh, introduce it as Four Shots. Why did you change the name? Well, just four kind of was a bit easier. There was a lot of really lame. For sure, that's yeah, just like the working title. <laughs> but also, it's like four people on the song, four instruments. Da 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 da. It's four. Yeah. All right. You know, we're in Guadalajara, mm -hmm. uh, when Jalisco, yeah, capital of uh, tequila. Would you like to do four shots of different type type of tequila with me? Are you into it? Sure. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. Do it. <laughs> you don't have drink. to finish it because you have yeah. a concert. You have, you, I don't want you to be. <laughs> We're on the stage, but take the Guadalajara Jalisco challenge. Yeah, sure. Four Definitely. shots. Señores, señores, cuatro shots con bad, bad, not good. <laughs> but it has to be in the bar around the corner because they yeah. serve alcohol in here. That's all right. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> How many how many hours does it take to play like that? Ten thousand. How's that one? Do you, you think you you're able to, to play that one? Yeah, or is I'll it go kind give, of it a, give it a blow. <laughs> <laughs> I can just sit in the bath and yeah, play. you can just be chilling there. Yeah. that's nice. Yeah, it's actually so dope. Hey, Tequila good. time. Okay. Uh, they're going to explain us. Obviously, they're just like, ¿cuántas variaciones hay de tequila aquí? Tenemos bastantes. O sea, en, en, en tequila en general. En tequila, yo creo que unas 10 más o menos. There's like 10 variations of tequila. Ahorita les voy a presentar la, el Don Julio, plata, herradura. Uh, that's, that's, uh, it's like white, that's, silver. That's one from yesterday. Es el cuervo tradicional. Uh, no sé traducir reposado. Uh, chilled? <laughs> <laughs> he chilled for a, for a, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like a, like a very, he chilled for a long time. So you not know how to do in English. Let's do it. Okay. Cool. You will, all right. You don't, you don't drink like, like this, like, unless you... I haven't had liquor in like a while. <laughs> That's one from yesterday. Arriba. 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 Abajo. Abajo. Al centro. Al centro. Para dentro. Para dentro. Oh. Are you guys shooting it? <laughs> And I pressed out. <laughs> okay. Second one. You guys are ready? Yes. Oh yeah. If you were making a song and name it four shots and suddenly there's this weird Mexican giving you four shots because of it. How it goes? Uh, it's, now it's your time. That was my time. Arriba. I don't remember this one. Abajo. 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 Al centro. Al centro. Al centro. Al centro. Pa dentro. Pa dentro. Pa dentro. Pa dentro. Pa dentro. That's good. I like that. That's really good. <laughs> Which yeah. one was better? I, I think I like the, I like the, the second one. one. Oh, yeah? Do you like the second one? Yeah. I kind of like the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sick! I can't do it. Arriba, arriba, abajo, abajo, al centro, centro para adentro. Ah. Okay. How are you handling this better than me? All right. This is the last one. Okay. okay. Eh, hace poco Dana Paola hizo un, brindo, uno, eh, un brindaje muy peculiar. Brindo porque brindar es preciso. No por lo mucho que me quiso, sino por lo pereja que me hizo. Brindemos por él, por su madre también, y por la hija de p***. <risa> <risa>
Está con él. Adentro, adentro y a chingar a su madre. Which means like, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Smoky. Hell yeah. That was good. Oh, it is really good. This is really good. You were just telling me about that. Like you're like some kind of chilling the whole thing about releasing a new album, taking yes. time to be on a studio and to be like touring like you used to tour. Why, why did you make that wise decision? Because I think it's a wise decision. Um, it just kind of happened. I think every, it just worked out. Like uh, Chester lives in California right now. California. <laughs> yes, Chester's on the streets in the clubs every night. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, it just kind of ha happened that way, and um, you know, since he's far away, we're a band that really kind of lives off of playing together. So Leila and I have been making a lot of music and just kind of like exploring. And Chester's been doing yeah, a lot on his own. Score, which is really cool. Yeah, we did a score to a movie. When is when is it going out? Uh, sometime next year. It's called Clifton Hill, though. Check it out if you want to get spooked. So you're like this tequila. You're getting better as you as you age. Hopefully. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Want another one at four shots? It's cool. I'll do another one. Yeah! Son mis bitches, bad bad, no duda, huevo, chingada madre. Well, I hope I don't win your concert after this. That's yeah, right. Cool. It's gonna get better with it. Yeah. Arriba, yeah. abajo, yeah. al centro, centro y para adentro. Y a chingar a su madre. Uy, ya no. Ya. Ya. You're going to do a rehearsal now. You're going to do your rehearsal for the Frigid Games. You're going to do, you're going to do rehearsal. Give me a. Give me a. <laughs> <laughs> let's, take this, let's take this to the concert. You have a concert later on. Yeah. Uh, you have to rehearsal. Can I show the fans that don't know you your freaking skills while you're making the sound check? Sure, sure. Freaking skills, yeah. <laughs> let's go. Of course, I won't drive. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> no. Can you show me a little bit of, of what you do on the, the like the, the the power Chester bass? <laughs> yeah, I mean we could play something. Sure. So, oh, you're gonna do? Oh, oh, oh! This is the best day of my life. Is it this bass in Confessions Part 2 with, with Mitch me uh, do this tattoo? I was, I was watching you play live in Toronto. It was so much fun you were having this. I like this. In the, this yeah, that part. That part? Yeah. That's like the main reason you're my favorite band, because you you rehearsed a lot to have this beautiful product now. Can you show me a drum solo and that's it? Like a <laughs> I'll try to do that at some point of my life. Thank you very much. Oh, thank course. you very much. I'm here at your stage, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, thank you very much. Me. Your guys are amazing. Thank you you have an amazing thanks show man. tonight. Thank you. Thanks, thank, you very much. thank you yeah, very course, much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're, you guys are amazing. Oh, thank thanks. You. Hey, happy to be here. Estás muy ocupado haciendo un soundcheck, así que yo voy a verlos. 
Suscríbanse, activan la campanita de notificación y nos vemos la próxima semana.